Hey guys, JR here. No, that's Loki, my dog. JR's behind the camera. I had a crazy idea. I wanted to whip up some Viking blood, mead wine. Um, kind of a disclaimer, this isn't really a how-to. It's more of a let's do because I've never made wine before. Let's run down our quick list of ingredients here and everything you're going to need to get this project together. I want to start off by telling you guys I'm going to do this in a couple of videos, so if you enjoyed this, you're going to want to hit the subscribe button so you don't mix, miss the next couple updates. And it's going to take a couple of gallons of spring water. You're going to want four pounds of cherries, dark and sweet is what I got, five pounds of honey, two packets of champagne yeast. I'm using EC1118. That says it'll survive up to 18% alcohol. Due to an editing snafu, I had to reshoot this, but I really wanted to show you guys the equipment I'm using to make my mead. Um, first, you're gonna need a fermenting bucket. Any uh, high quality food grade bucket will work. I like the brewer's buckets because they have the spigot over here on the side. That's gonna make it easier to rack my mead into the glass carboy. You're gonna need a glass container to rehydrate your yeast in, a thermometer so you can check the temperature of your water so you know you've reached the proper temperature to rehydrate your yeast. Something to mix the whole thing together with. A uh, big bowl and a mashed potato smasher so you can smash your cherries. And then I have a hydrometer so I can take a predictive alcohol reading so I know about how strong my wine is going to turn out. I also wanted to stress how important it is that everything you use is sterilized. Uh, wash everything in hot soapy water and then I use a A1. It's a no wipe sterilizer that I bought at the local brewery supply. You basically spray it on, wipe it off with a paper towel and then you know for sure everything's sterilized and it won't uh, affect your yeast or your fermentation. Alright, let's get on to making this mead. Alright, so I'm going to start off by heating a half gallon of water because warm water is going to help the honey kind of dissolve really spread out into the mix. I'm going to stop at about 110 degrees because my yeast needs to be uh, rehydrated between 104 and 109 degrees. That's going to maybe depend or change a little bit depending on what kind of yeast you have. Um, the directions are always going to be on the back of the package for the uh, rehydrating temperature. And while my water warms up, I'm going to go smash four pounds of strawberry. Okay, so here we got two pounds of cherries and basically I'm gonna say the more you smash them the better off you're gonna be as far as getting all the flavor and the juice out and into your honey water mix um, not really gonna waste anybody's time watching me smash up cherries so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these smashed and uh, add the other two pounds to this and continue to smash them all when water warms up keep an eye on the temperature and wait for that 110 mark all right, see you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, I don't know if you can see this or not, but we have hit our 104 to 109 degree window. So what I'm gonna do now is grab a couple of these packets of yeast. And we're gonna put them into the warm water. Like I said, these are two five gram packages. We'll get them both in there, get it open. All right, so we're going to put both of those in there. Give them a quick stir. Yes, I'm using my thermometer to stir. I don't want to hear about it. If you look over here, you can see I got my cherries pretty well smashed up. So we're going to let this yeast rehydrate here for a little bit while we go get the rest of this together. We'll take our warm water over here, the leftovers of that half gallon. We'll mix that with our honey, and uh, the warm water should help the honey dissolve. Okay, so we're back here at our fermenting bucket. We're going to take our warm water, add the warm water to the bucket. We'll take our honey, which I didn't even open yet. Let's see if I can get it open here quick. Five pounds of honey. Let me wipe off the lens here. I don't know what I got on there. Probably honey. Better? Awesome. Let's do this. Mm. 
And in case you're wondering, no, five pounds of honey does not pour quickly. It does if you squeeze the tar out of it though. All right, so we got our five pounds of honey in the bucket with our warm water. I'm gonna go ahead with my whisk and start trying to whisk this together. Let the rest of that bottle just kind of drain while I stir. Hmm, looks like we got all the honey out of there. Yeah, most of it anyway. The majority, we'll put the rest on a piece of toast in the morning. So we'll get this nice and nice and mixed up here. And then we'll be ready to add our cherries and another gallon and a half of room temperature water. Here goes our cherries. fill her up so we make sure we got right about as you can tell I'm measuring very carefully this was a two and a half gallon jug I'm gonna shoot for about that two gallon mark so we got that and we're gonna give this a good stir again because we want this to be pretty close to room temperature I think when we add our yeast to it cherries out of that whisk. Maybe I have the feeling I should have used a spoon. All right, I'm going to grab our yeast. Okay, here I got our yeast. I'm just going to pour that right in. Make sure we get all the stuff off the bottom. Give her a good swishing. Put the rest of that in there as much as we can. And we're going to grab our whisk and we're going to give it a good stir because we really we want to get some oxygen, some air into this. Now it's called a must, I do believe, but this liquid mixture with our cherries and honey, and we're going to kind of give that an aggressive stir, see if we can't get a little water in there. We'll get it all mixed up, and then we're going to take a, uh, a uh, reading with our hydrometer and see if we can get a uh, predicted alcohol volume out of this. This is our hydrometer. It's going to go into here. And it should float. You're not going to be able to see it, but I just wanted to show you floating in the tube. Well, you can see it, but you can't read it. And it looks like... It says it should be... Looks like we're going to end up right around 11% alcohol by volume. We'll see. I've never really taken one of these predictive... I guess it's almost 12, which it says table wine on the thing. All right, so we got our reading. Let's get this baby out of there. Pour that back into the mead. Don't want to waste it. Honey and cherries are not cheap. All right, guys, she's all mixed up and ready to go. The next thing we're going to do is find a uh, nice dark. Oh, I guess I better put the lid on it. I lied. The next thing we're going to do is put a lid on this baby. Put it on just so it doesn't come loose. And then we'll put our airlock in there. Better grab a little water for our airlock. Anyway, we'll put our airlock in. We'll get the bucket all sealed up. We're gonna find a nice dark place for this to sit that stays about 70 degrees. We're gonna let it ferment in this for about the next seven to 10 days. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna to open it, give it a good stir, try and get some fresh oxygen mixed in there, and then I'll do the same thing on the third day. And after that, I'm just gonna let it sit and keep an eye on this 
airlock and this actually when you have water in it the carbon dioxide will come out it'll bubble out of here and won't let anything kind of get into your must so i don't know thanks a lot guys for stopping in and checking this out um, like i said subscribe i'll do a part two to this when we rack it over into the carboy and uh please remember to adopt your pets from animal shelters take care everybody